Good morning everyone and welcome to the webinar. Um, we are joined today by Chisala, who is our application specialist, Joel who is our key account manager and Michael Taylor who is our customer service manager. Um, we'll start by doing a presentation from Chisala so I'll pass over to him now. Well, uh, thank you very much, Rachel. Um, welcome, everybody, once again to our uh, webinar on uh, grain moisture testing. Um, so, a brief outline of what we're going to cover today. Sorry about that. We seem to uh, be having a few technical difficulties. Right, there we go. So, uh, first and foremost, we're going to cover exactly why we test for moisture in grain. And then I'm going to give a very, very brief outline of the principles of grain moisture testing technologies. So these are the main uh, testing technologies that are used. Um, thereafter, I am going to brief, very briefly discuss what UGMA is and um, what its significance um, is when it comes to uh, rapid grain moisture testing equipment. Um, we'll then go into a session where we'll discuss the features of the Perton Aquamatic 5200 series, uh, at which point uh, my colleagues will also join in the discussion. Uh, we'll have a live demonstration and uh, most importantly, a uh, Q&A session right at the end. Okay. So why do we test? Uh, for moisture in grain. Well, considering the fact that grain is sold on a weight basis, um, it is highly significant. So, the moisture in your grain could be worth a lot of money, um, especially if it is present in the right amount. So, when you look at uh, grain that is in a 25 ton lorry load at 14% moisture, um, three and a half tons of that lorry load is actually water. Um, and whoever is buying the grain would be willing to buy that three and a half tons. So if your grain price at that particular point is, let's say, 180 pounds, those 3.5 3 tons of water will be worth 630 uh, pounds, which is very, very valuable water um, to whoever is selling the grain. So the implications for somebody who is drying grain is if you end up selling your wheat um, and your buyer has specified that they'll buy wheat from you at 14% moisture and you dry the grain to well below that 14%, um, then it simply means that you end up losing out um, on money. Another very, very important aspect of why we test is when we look at food and feed safety. Uh, one of the most significant um, um, food, safe, food and feed safety considerations when we look at grain is the presence um, of mycotoxins. Okay? So if grain is stored at the wrong moisture content, you will have um, a lot of trouble storing it and ensuring that it's safe um, before you pass it on to your buyer. And there's also the quality aspect, um, you know, the, the, the presence of pests, um, dust mites as well, which all depend on um, an optimal moisture content. Yeah. If anybody has ever come across grain that has been kept wet for a period of time, you'll note that it has a very, very um, well, significantly um, um, unpleasant um, smell. So, and that smell can be passed on to um, 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 the end user. Okay. So if we look at the principles of grain moisture testing, okay, the traditional method is the gravimetric or loss and dry method. And this essentially works where you, have, you weigh your grain, you take note of the weight of that grain in, uh, uh, in an approved oven, to dry it, the moisture is driven off, then you're able to weigh the, your, um, what is remaining after the moisture is, is, is driven off 
and we'll be able to tell exactly how much moisture you have uh, by difference. Okay? Now, this traditional gravimetric method, it's important to note that this is an officially uh, recognized method, um, recognized by um, um, all of these um, organizations that are indicated on the right-hand side of the screen. So in terms of equipment that you would need when you're running the traditional gravity method, you can either use the classic method where you have a weighing balance and you've got a moisture oven, um, which is all um, in individual pieces. Okay? Alternatively, you could use an instrument like the Brabender MTCA, which essentially simplifies this process where you've got your dry oven your, and your, 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 your weight balance all integrated into one instrument, uh, which is also able to then take uh, recordings of your moisture content um, automatically. Okay? So in addition to the um, loss and drying method, there are other methods um, such as the Carl Fisher titration method, but you don't generally find these being routinely used um, in, in, in grain laboratories. Okay. So the technology that I would like to focus on today is the capacitance uh, method of measuring moisture. Okay. Um, so of all the different rapid methods that are available, this method is the most prominent um, in grain. Uh, uh, here we're moving away from the traditional method, which uh, in, in where you're able to get a result um, in hours uh, to rapid methods where you're able to get results within seconds. So the figure that um, is shown uh, in the presentation is shows the basic principle of a plate capacitor. So a capacitor is simply defined as a device that is able to store and dissipate energy, or more correctly, an imbalance of charge by holding apart pairs of opposite charges. So therefore, when these two opposite charges are held apart, the space that is left uh, uh, between them um, is uh, 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 essentially becomes an electric field. Okay? So your plate capacitor consists of two oppositely charged conductive plates. Okay? Um, and in green moisture meters, what you have is you will have an alternating current, um, which uh, generates frequencies in uh, the radio uh, wave. Uh, so in a capacitor, the di dielectric constant of the material which is separating the two plates is always constant. And so is the surface area of the plates and the distance between the plates. We are establishing exactly what the dielectric constant of a material is. Those, uh, those factors that I've just mentioned um, are important um, and are inco incorporated um, in the calculation. Okay? So in your ordinary um, um, capacitor, the capacitance remains constant. Okay? Now, when you introduce grain um, into that area where there is an electrical charge, Depending on the grain that you have, depending on its moisture content, um, you are going to have changes um, in capacitance. So it's this particular um, 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 phenomenon of capacitance being a, a, a specific property of a specific material at a specific temperature um, that grain moisture meters are able to exploit. So the factors contributing to the dielectrical capacitance based moisture measurement, the first is temperature. Okay? The dielectric constant of any material is temperature dependent. If we look at the star of today's show, which is water, we have 
the dielectric constant of water um, at zero degrees being uh, about 88. This thing decreases to 80 when the temperature is increased to 20 degrees. And when the temperature is further increased to 40 degrees, this further decreases to about 73. Okay? So dielectric constant of water or any material is highly dependent on the temperature of the system. But then when we look at water being present in a complex system such as grain, the way that the water behaves when it's pure okay, um, is totally different from the way that it's going to behave when it is within a complex uh, matrix because the water um, is, is, is interacting with other components in the grain which also further um, affect its dielectric constant. The test cell geometry, okay, uh, this is also important because the dielectric constant of a material is influenced by its density as it is a volume based parameter. So the volume within the test cell is occupied by both grain and air. So this makes the measured dielectric constant a complex combination of the two. Add to this the regular shape of uh, individual grain kernels, the individual grain densities, um, and the method of filling a test cell. These all have an effect on the bulk density or the test weight of the grain um, in the test cell. And therefore, that is going to have an influence on the dielectric constant that is measured. So capacitance moisture meters um, um, generally operate in the radio uh, uh, frequency, as I had mentioned earlier. Um, all the technology is generally relied on the lower frequencies. So you're looking at um, 1 to 20 uh, uh, megahertz. Uh, so that is generally the, the, the high frequency range of radio waves. Whereas the newer technologies um, tend to exploit higher frequencies which go up to 150 megahertz with a very high frequency range. Um, and in this range, you have less sensitivity to moisture uh, distribution within the kernels, as well as any subtle differences that may be present um, in, in, in grain. Okay. So I mentioned earlier about the, the importance of, of, of moisture. Okay. So the moisture content of uh, uh, um, uh, influences uh, the, di the dielectric constant of any material. Um, and this is exactly what makes it possible for us to exploit um, capacitance um, to measure uh, moisture content. Okay. So developing a calibration which is going to be based on the classic methods for grain moisture meters uh, requires measuring the exact dielectric uh, characteristics of the grain looking at the density of the grain, measuring the temperature, as well as having a reliable reference moisture. Okay, so the reference methods or the classic methods that we use to measure uh, moisture um, are not obsolete. They're, they're still absolutely um, So UGMA, um, what is the fuss? So the UGMA, uh, which stands for Unified Grain Moisture Algorithm, was developed by the United uh, uh, States Department of Agriculture's Grain Inspection, Packers, and Stockyards Administration. Um, their aim was to provide a moisture measurement technology that uh, greatly improved the accuracy and simplifies the whole process of calibration development. Okay. Um, the method allows many similar types of grains, such as different wheat classes, to all be grouped together and therefore use exactly the same calibration. Remember earlier on I talked about um, um, you know, properties of individual um, um, grain species. Um, uh, being unique to each other. So each grain species is going to have its own individual um, 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 dielectric constant. Okay? 
So if you were to use um, all the technology that is well, most of which is based on the, the lower frequency um, um, uh, instruments, what you would essentially need to do is have individual calibrations for different weed types, um, individual calibrations for different grain species. But with the UGMA, what that does is it simplifies that whole process and essentially you're able to use one single calibration um, across the board. Okay. So for any of you that are interested in looking at exactly what the steps of the UGMA algorithm are, um, I've highlighted those, but you don't have to worry about So what are the benefits then of the UGMA? Okay. It's a standardized method. Okay. Uh, UGMA makes it possible to standardize commercial grain moisture testers, um, especially because it's an independently developed and publicly available algorithm, which also requires standardized instrument design. In this particular case, if you are a grain trader and you are selling your grain to a mill or, uh, or, or, or an animal feed uh, producer, you know that you are using exactly the same type of equipment when you measure your uh, moisture content and when they measure their moisture content of the same grain. Okay? The minimum frequency um, at the higher frequencies uh, approaching 150 megahertz reduces the effect of conductivity on moisture measurement, which results in better accuracy in all grain types, um, as well as in high moisture um, immature grains. Okay? With the older lower frequency instruments, um, the effect of the conductivity of the grain um, added a lot of noise um, and had to be accounted for um, uh, when calculating the moisture content. But when you move to your higher frequencies, um, there is less of an influence of conductivity and it's all purely based on um, uh, the dielectric constant of the grain. Okay. The phenomenon called moisture rebound um, tends to occur when moisture is unevenly distributed in a bulk sample. Okay. This particularly becomes important when you are looking at um, commercial grain dryers, where you will dry your grain, pull it straight out of the dryer, okay, take a moisture reading before the moisture has e uh, e equilibrated within the whole grain mass. Okay. Come back a few days later, once the moisture content has equilibrated, then you're going to get a different result. Um, with UGMA um, um, technology, this higher frequency of, 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 of reading um, uh, takes care of this discrepancy, which is often uh, observed. So it is possible for you to use a UGMA compliant instrument and have confidence in the result that you're getting if you're measuring moisture um, of grain that is coming straight off of the dryer. Okay. Within the UGMA, you have a very effective density correction within the algorithm, and this improves accuracy uh, and causes all grain types um, to conform to very similar uh, 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 geometric, uh, or to conform geometrically uh, uh, similar uh, dielectric constants versus moisture patterns. Similar grain types that typically require separate moisture calibrations, as I mentioned earlier before, um, are combined and much smaller differences within grain types uh, um, uh, uh, caused, uh, uh, you, you, you notice much, much smaller differences within grain types um, when you are using the instrument from year to year. Often that is only taken care of by adjusting, uh, having a minor adjustment um, on the bias. So you'll find that the, the, the stability of your instrument uh, for its lifetime 
um, tends to be greatly improved versus a non-UGMA uh, compliant instrument. The temperature sensitivity is also reduced when you are using this higher uh, uh, frequency uh, compared to um, the older technologies. So when we look at the Perton Acromatic, um, which is the UGMA compliant instrument that Calibre um, supplies, um, it is something that is proven on frozen samples. In terms of the calibrations that are actually available, you've got well over 50 um, different calibrations. Uh, sorry, uh, you're able to use the same calibration, which covers well over 50 different grain types. Okay? Um, in a few moments, uh, my colleague will run a demo and he will show you exactly how easy it is to use the instrument, um, how quickly uh, you're able to get uh, a, a test, um, and in the, you know, in, in terms of um, the data that you're able to generate um, in those 10 seconds, you're able to get data on your moisture, temperature, as well as the test weight. Okay. So at this point, um, I will hand over to my colleague, Joel, um, who is well addressed for the occasion. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, thank you, Shizaka. Um, what we thought we'd do is do a quick demonstration of the machine, and then we can actually go back to a small demonstration of how it can be used. So um, we will run a sample of wheat through the machine. Really, really easy to do. And I can literally just tip the sample straight into the hopper. When the sample is in the hopper, the test will automatically start. And then I do have the option of entering sample IDs or a note um, to go with the sample. So if we tip the sample in, and then you'll hear the machine. And then the results are displayed on the screen. So all we have to do is empty the sample drawer and uh, then make a mess, and then uh, the machine is ready to go again. So um, the simple operation of the 5200 is similar to many bench top moisture beaters that you'd be familiar with. However, the distinguishing features are all hidden inside the unit. So hopefully, um, we'll be able to see a presentation on your screen. Um, and the initial image is the, uh, is the unit with the side panels all stripped off. So you can see at the top of the unit is the loading hopper. And this is where we've just tipped the sample into. As the sample flows through the hopper, it passes the temperature sensing strip, which we can see on the slide. So the sensing strip in the bottom of the hopper outlet um, has a large 42 square centimeter surface area. As the grain flows across the strip, a large proportion of the sample will come into contact with it. This will give you uh, a quick measurement As Shizawa um, mentioned, uh, grain temperature is a really important part of the uh, measuring process because for every degree of grain temperature difference, the moisture reading can be affected by up to 0.1%. Um, so it's easy to see how this often overlooked part of the meter will contribute to the overall. So um, the uh, next image shows the actual temperature that's inside the unit. So after the sample has fallen through the hopper and passed the temperature strip, it's entered here. Um, and in the person machine, it's a single uh, cap cell, which ensures that the uh, dimensions are exactly the UGMA standards that Shizawa spoke about. And it also ensures that every 5200 
um, sold has got exactly the same test cell, giving standardised repeatable results. So um, the next image shows the uh, um, again, this is absolutely critical to the accuracy of the moisture as well as the specific way. Needs to hold the same volume of grain as we pass into some sort of correct density for measurement. If it's too full and therefore too heavy, the accuracy of the moisture reading will be affected as well as the hexproof reading. Um, so this uh, strike off mechanism ensures the cell is filled the same time and time again. And any excess grain then gets swept off cleanly into the bottom sample drawer, again, ensuring the machine doesn't end up filling up. Uh, in use. So, final image um, shows the, the grain being emptied out of the cell. Um, the lower cell drawer employs a snap action, um, which again makes the cell cleaner, so the, uh, the cell doesn't end up with a buildup of dust and debris. If the cell ends up filling up with, with dust, So um, basically, that is a brief look at the internals of the machine. Um, with the connectivity of the machine, the industry unit is designed to be integrated with existing lab management systems or weighing software, um, connected computer uh, via USB or Ethernet. Um, and the USB is also used for. usually do in an annual service. Um, however, with the ease of use of the machine, it's really simple to do it if you do need to do it yourself. The user interface also allows um, the end user to adjust the bias of any individual commodities in the unit and create duplicate commodities with separate biases. This is something that we would usually see uh, with, um, for example, winter and spring barley. Um, we would have two options um, rather than just having an individual barley channel. Uh, again, the difference between them is you've got a slightly different bias. But Michael will go over all of this in a moment. So what we'll do if we just run another quick test um, on the instrument to basically show how it does all of these things. Um, together. So again, we will look on the screen and it is already selected wheat because that's what we tested last time. So all I need to do is tip the sample in and the machine will automatically start. Fill the cell, it strikes off the sample and then the cell will then empty into the test floor and the results will appear on the screen. Again, empty the door and that's it. The machine's ready to run another sample. So um, if there's any questions about the operation, we will have a question and answer session at the end. Um, if you do have any questions immediately, just pop them in the chat box at the bottom and then uh, Rachel will go over it and we'll all try and answer them as best as we can. So. Um, I'll hand you across to Michael now, who will look at the uh, biasing process and the service. Thank you. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, as Bill said, yeah, get your answers or any questions written in the chat room now, please, if you've got anything, and then Rachel can coordinate that for us. Um, when we get these instruments in, we will check them with uh, the UK Grain Network samples. So we have the moisture the content and the specific weight of barley, wheat, rapeseed, oats, and we can set them up um, so that they are accurate to those standards. As Joe mentioned, we can also create duplicate um, channels. You can have as many wheat or barley as you wish, and they could all have different biases. Um, we can't quite show the screen at the moment with this camera setup, so there is a video I think that explains that, but. Um, the menu is quite straightforward. You would just log in uh, as a user. There is a password provided. You can then uh, adjust the, the biases of the moistures and uh, specific weight. Um, 
to fine tune it for your particular stores or laboratories. Um, servicing, we will recommend an annual service on these uh, instruments. Um, although the, the sample cell is all self contained, we do occasionally get grains spilling out inside it. So we strip all the covers off and we sweep all any loose grains out. Uh, and then we recalibrate um, the specific weight and we recalibrate the temperature sensor as well. Um, we can also download any data that the customer requires and leave it on a USB stick for you as well. I think, so that's I think now, if you've got any questions, that'd be a good time to fire them across. Okay, so we've had a question through um, how often does the machine need servicing? So, Michael, that's one for you. So, 12 months is, is what we recommend on, on the, on the, uh, on the servicing. Um, we have service engineers that can come out to site, or alternatively, if so desire you can send your instrument into us to be to be recalibrated but um, we normally visit customer site every 12 months and then you get a calibration certificate on that basis um and another question we've got how do you know um that you've put enough sample into the drawer right, so um when you go to run the test as soon as you start filling the hopper when it gets to the right level it will automatically start. So basically keep tipping in until it starts. Um, I think the approximate sample size is about 600 mil, um, there or thereabouts, obviously dependent upon commodity, but basically it does it all for you, just tip it in. Thanks, Joel. Um, so if anyone has any more questions, uh, please let us know. We will be sending the presentation and um, a video out to you afterwards with any other material that will feel will benefit. Um, so if anyone does have any questions now, if we end the meeting, please feel free to reach out to either, either Michael or Joel. Um, they're more than happy to help with any questions that you may have. Um, so thank you everyone for attending. Thank you.